Whether you're new to the job or a seasoned veteran, your job as a professional driver is getting your cargo from one point to another safely and in a timely manner. While there are a number of unavoidable factors that could disrupt your workday, conducting regular inspections of your tractor trailer is one of the simplest ways to help avoid accidents, roadside breakdowns, and lost road time due to poor vehicle condition. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations require you to conduct three types of vehicle inspections, a pre-trip, on the road, and post-trip inspection. And although these regulations establish a minimum inspection points, your company may require you to check everything on your vehicle as an added precaution. This program will help guide you through a complete and thorough inspection on a typical tractor trailer. And after completing this program, you'll be able to conduct a thorough pre-trip inspection, explain what an on-the-road inspection needs to be done and how to complete one, complete a proper post-trip inspection, explain when a driver vehicle inspection report or DVIR is required, and how to complete one, and discuss the importance of using the same inspection routine every time you drive. We'll start the program where you'll typically start your day with a pre-trip inspection. Before you get behind the wheel of your tractor trailer, you need to conduct a thorough inspection to be sure it's safe to operate. Pre-trip inspections typically take between 15 and 20 minutes to complete, but it may take more or less time depending on how well you've got your routine down. Before you start your pre-trip inspection, you'll need to review the last driver's DVIR, even if you were the last person to operate that vehicle. If any damage or defects were recorded, you'll want to pay special attention to those areas during your inspection so you're confident they've been addressed. A pre-trip inspection covers the entire vehicle with a five-step process that takes you around your tractor trailer in a logical order. You'll start in the front for step one, where you'll inspect the engine compartment and front axle components. Step two is the in-cab inspection, and in step three, you'll check the lights. Step four is the walk around, which will always be the most time-consuming part of your pre-trip inspection. Then, you'll finish your pre-trip by checking the brake system, which is step five. Whether you follow this sequence or develop your own, the important thing is you make sure all components are inspected. If you do your inspection the same way every time, you'll be more efficient and effective. Plus, there's less of a chance something will get missed or forgotten. Before you begin your pre-trip inspection, confirm the parking brakes have been set, put the vehicle's keys in your pocket, chalk the wheels, and open the hood. Step one, inspect the engine compartment and front axle components. Verify that everything under the hood appears to be in good condition and has no obvious issues, and then begin your inspection of the engine compartment on the passenger side. Check all fluid levels, like your oil, coolant, and transmission fluid, plus any other fluids on this side. Wipe off any dipsticks and get them seated properly to get a good reading. Top off any fluids that are under the ad line. Sometimes it can be hard to gauge the level in your coolant reservoir. Here's a little trick. Give the reservoir a gentle rock and watch for the fluid to move. Check all your hoses for leaks and wear and be sure all fittings or clamps are tight. Inspect all the belts to see if there's any sign of wear or excessive slack. Generally speaking, you want less than an inch of play on a belt. Check the belt slack by pushing on it mid-span. The smaller the belt, the less movement you should see. The alternator is usually on this side of the truck. You should confirm its mounting bolts are tight. Wire connections are good. Nothing's cracked, frayed, or rubbing, and there's no charring or other damage. Continue to check all electrical wiring under the hood for cracks or wear as well. It's easy to get complacent with the under the hood check. Automatic slack adjusters, oilers, and greasers have eliminated a lot of the mechanical problems with newer vehicles. But things still can and do go wrong so you need to stay on your toes. Let's move on to step two, the end cab inspection. The inspection of the interior of the cab may be the easiest part of your pre-trip inspection, but that doesn't mean it's not every bit as important as every other step. To begin, open the driver's side door and ensure the vehicle registration is valid and you've got all your required paperwork in the cab. Also, verify the annual inspection sticker is present and valid if not, a copy of the annual inspection report works too if you need to present proof of inspection to an officer during a roadside inspection. 
Look for your fire extinguisher. Be sure it is securely mounted, accessible, fully charged, and appropriate for the cargo you'll be hauling. Double check all necessary safety equipment is accounted for and is adequately secured. This includes, at minimum, three reflective triangles or other warning devices. Spare fuses for each type and size your truck uses. And any personal protective equipment such as gloves or a reflective vest. Climb into the cab using three points of contact. Before you finish the end cab portion of your inspection, take a few seconds to sit and listen for unusual noises, which could signal a problem. That's it for the end cab. Now, on to step three, the lights. Inoperative or defective lighting is a commonly cited violation during roadside inspections. It's also one that can be easiest for officers to spot. To check the lights, ensure the parking brake is set and turn on your low beams and emergency flashers. Get out and look to see that the lights are on and appropriately aimed, and that your four ways are working. Turn on the high beams and get out to confirm they are working and appropriately aimed as well. Move around to the back of the trailer to ensure your taillights and rear emergency flashers work properly. Did you know if your taillights are loose or fall out, the trailer lights might stop working altogether? This means the traffic behind you will have no idea when you're turning, stopping, or changing lanes. Also at night, no one approaching from the rear will be able to see you until they get close enough for their headlights to light up your reflectors or conspicuity markings. This, you know, is way too close for comfort. While it's easy to spot and is a relatively easy fix, a damaged or defective light can be very dangerous. That's why this problem is considered more serious than many other areas in the eyes of roadside inspectors. Step four is the comprehensive walk around. This part of your vehicle inspection includes a detailed assessment of the exterior of both your tractor and the trailer. Complete your walk around by starting at the front of the tractor. Take a step back to verify the truck is not leaning to one side or the other. If you see that your truck is leaning, you'll want to figure out why. Leaning is normally caused by defects in the suspension, problems with the frame, flat tires, or a significant shift in cargo. Look to see the windshield isn't cracked or chipped. Test your wiper blades for a snug fit against the glass and verify the blades are in good condition. Grab a hold of the front bumper and try to shake it to ensure it's secure and check to see your license plate is legible and properly attached. Check that the tractor body is free of damage and that the ground beneath the truck shows no indication of leaking fluid. For the rest of your exterior inspection, try this method. Check the top, then down, then under. Starting at the front of the tractor and trailer on the driver's side. The walk-around portion of your pre-trip inspection probably feels like a lot to remember, because it is. But following the sequence as we've discussed will help you get in the habit of checking each item in the same order every time. As the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. But don't practice your walk-around until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Now, last but most certainly not least, step five the brake system check. Of all the things that could go wrong on your truck, there are very few things that are scarier than trying to stop when your brakes are out. Losing your brakes is just about every professional driver's worst nightmare. A thorough review of the brake system will help you avoid the potentially disastrous effects of failed brakes. This inspection is often called the LABPS check, which stands for leaks, alarms, button pop out, parking brakes, and service brakes. First, make sure your wheels are still chocked so the truck can't roll away, and then turn the engine on to build up air pressure. Once the vehicle has been idling for a minute or two and the air pressure is over 100 PSI, release the parking brake and charge the trailer brakes. Then, apply the foot brake. Turn off the engine and watch your gauges. Look to see that the vehicle is not leaking more than 4 PSI per minute or three PSI per minute if you don't have a trailer. This obviously means you'll have to watch it for at least a full 60 seconds. Next, turn the key back on, pump the air pressure down, and notice where the low pressure indicator comes on. It should activate before 60 PSI. And that's it for the pre-trip inspection. Five steps and about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, 
If you discover any problems during your pre-trip inspection, do not operate your vehicle. Take appropriate action to get it fixed. While there are no record-keeping requirements regarding pre-trip inspections, many companies still require drivers to fill out a pre-trip report and record it on their daily log as a remark under the grid graph. Check with your supervisor to determine your company's expectations. After completing your thorough pre-trip inspection, you're probably feeling pretty confident in the safety and performance of your tractor trailer. But even if it gets a gold star during your pre-trip, your equipment can easily deteriorate throughout the course of the day. Because of the additional risks associated with hauling hazardous materials, drivers of vehicles carrying hazmat are required to conduct on-the-road inspections of their tires every time they're stopped. But as a best practice, all drivers should give their entire vehicle a quick once-over whenever they are stopped. The regs require you to check your cargo and load securing devices early in your day and throughout your trip. Specifically, you'll need to conduct your first on-the-road inspection within the first 50 miles of your trip. After the first check, your inspection should take place when a change of duty status is made. And every three hours or every 150 miles, whichever comes first. Of course, some damage and defects are going to be out of your control. But conducting routine on-the-road inspections will help you discover problems while there's still time to manage them before they become dangerous. At the end of every workday, you'll need to conduct a post-trip inspection. Not only is this a good idea, it's required by the regulations. Post-trip inspections help identify any potential safety issues that need to be addressed before the next driver of the vehicle takes over, even if that next driver is you. During your post-trip inspection, you'll inspect the same items you did in your pre-trip. The only exception is you won't be able to check things that are affected by heat, like oil, tire pressure, brake shoes and drums, hub oil and exhaust components. If you discover any defect or deficiency with your brakes, steering, lighting, tires, or other items that you believe might compromise the vehicle's safe operation, document it on a DVIR and report it to your company. This also includes any minor defects you are told about during a roadside inspection that you are not able to get repaired during the day. Then, before the vehicle can be operated again, your company has to certify that any defective items have been repaired, or that those items were inspected by a mechanic or company official and do not need to be corrected to safely operate the vehicle. While post-trip inspections don't allow you to check everything, they at least provide you with a peace of mind knowing you're leaving the vehicle in good shape for the next driver. And although post-trip inspections themselves are required by the regs, check with your company to understand their expectations for completing DVIRs. Driving a tractor trailer is a big responsibility. There are too many things that can go wrong if a vehicle is not properly maintained. The consequences of a neglected vehicle can be costly, and in some cases even deadly. Completing a vehicle inspection may only take you a small amount of time, but doing them will have a large impact on your safety and the safety of those around you. Conduct a thorough pre-trip inspection before you hit the road and follow the five-step inspection process we discussed, or your own equally thorough version of it. When you're on the road, carve out time to do a few abbreviated walk-around inspections to make sure no issues have surfaced since your pre-trip inspection. At the end of every workday, complete a thorough post-trip inspection and fill out a DVIR if there are any defects on your tractor trailer. If you only remember one thing about conducting vehicle inspections, remember this. Always do everything in the same order, and always do everything.